my first swingers party. Yeah, we don't get into it. I'm the realest nigga in it. You already know. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Chris Law Network. I am your host, Chris Law. Today we will be will be discussing my first swingers party. Yeah, we don't get into it. Okay, um, I want to say the first year that I ever went to a swingers event or anything swingers oriented had to be around um, 2007. And I remember um, me and my partner, Monte, Big Monte, we was, uh, we was getting ready to go to work. We used to work at this club on Glenwood called uh, Club Chocolate. Anybody from Atlanta that used to be on the east side back in, you know, back during that time, there was a club called Club Chocolate, you know what I mean? I want to say that, I think they opened around about, it used to be called Club ATL, then it changed to Club Chocolate. But um, me and Monte, we was both working security at the club. So um, we pulled up, and something happened that particular night, and they wasn't going to open. You know, they didn't, like, tell us before we got there. So I was already out the crib. I had a girlfriend at that time in 07, but um, I was living in McDonough, Georgia. So the distance from McDonough to Glenwood, you know, that's, that's, that's a pretty nice little distance. And I had some clothes in the car. Just so happened, I had some other clothes in the car. So I remember um, we was there, and they was like, well, we're not going to open tonight. So Monte was like, damn, law, so what you getting ready to do? I was like, man, shit, I guess I'll go back to the crib. So he was like, no, nah, man, I got a bottle of, um, what he had? He had some tequila. I think some, uh, he had a bottle of Jose Cuervo in his car. He was like, man, I got a bottle of Cuervo, nigga, what's up? You want to drink? I was like, hell yeah, yeah. Now, Monte was wild as hell already. I want to say Monte might have been like two, three years older than me. I think so. So we sitting there in his car, and we, you know, we was talking, we was drinking, and that thing, you know, we started talking about swinger clubs and shit. Now, my girlfriend, she, you know, I usually get home around 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, so she wasn't expecting me no time soon, and right then, it might have been like 10 p.m., so... We started talking about swinger clubs and shit like that. And he was like, man, I know where one at. He was like, I ain't never been. Come on, man, let's go check it out. So I said, you know what? Cool. Let's go. Because I had been thinking about it for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Me being a person that was already having a lot of sex with many different women anyway, it was like that probably was just the next step, you know, to just go all out, you know, and start, you know, going to places where they have orgies and shit like that. So... We pulled up at this spot called Club Venus. It was over there off of, uh, what is that? What is that? Dutch Valley. Dutch Valley Road. It's um, over there like that Piedmont, Monroe area. So we pulled up. Mind you, he ain't never been to no shit like this. I ain't never been. But me, I'm thinking like, okay, well, shit. We go to a swinger club. Any woman in here is probably just down the fuck. You probably could just walk up to him like, hey, what's up, baby? Want to go in the room? Eh, nothing like that. We get up in that shit, and I'm seeing these women up in there, you know, some fine as hell, some not so much. So I'm going up, you know, to various women like, hey, baby, how you doing? Because on the street, you know, I'm Chris Law. I can walk up and say, hey, baby, how you doing? You know, you're looking nice today, you know, whoop de whoop de whoop and the conversation be like that. I'm walking up to these women, and they not like, you know, tooting their nose up, but my conversation ain't what they trying to hear, you know? So literally, we spent, I want to say he spent 60 to get in. I probably spent 60 to get in. I didn't get shit. You know what I mean? We literally stayed up in there all night, damn near till they closed. I didn't get not one piece of a woman up in there. So, you know, I wasn't mad, but I was confused. I was like, you know, I'm watching women walk off with guys, and I'm looking at the guys like, she just went with this fat ass nigga, you know, and I'm like, so I was determined to come back and get me some pussy from one of them. I was determined. So I want to say the following weekend, I went back, or during the week, one of them. You know, obviously, this was 07, this 2020. 
You know what I'm saying? I remember a lot of it, but this was like the first one, you know? So, boom. I um went back again, and I tried a different approach. I'm going to tell you the approach I tried. Now, this goes for any guys who may be just getting into the whole swinging thing that want to try it out. This this is what you really need to pay attention to. So, this time I went up in there, and I was just real cool, real cool and laid back. And I want to say, excuse me, I want to say, the NBA playoffs were going on. So what I did, I went and I just sat there and I was watching the game. So it was a chick that was sitting there watching the game too. And I said, who you going for? Simple. And I want to say the Lakers was playing. I want to say that. And um, she was like, you know, I'm going for the Lakers. And I was like, okay, me too, me too. You know, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. Rest in peace, Kobe. So we talked about basketball for about five, maybe ten minutes. Then we just started talking, just having regular conversation, not no, you know, nothing like the first time when I went where it was like, damn, baby, you fine. You know, what's up? God damn. And it wasn't working. I'm sitting there having a general conversation with this woman. Do you know after this general conversation was over, that woman said, hey, so uh, you want to go to one of the rooms and, and just kind of chill? And I was like, Shit, I know what the hell that means when you say you want to go to a room. Went to the room, and it was on. Thus, now I knew when you are in a uh, swingers environment, we already know that the topic is sex. That's just there. Or rather, not the topic. The opportunity for sex is already there. But most women in the swingers lifestyle, they don't want to be treated like a whore. They want you to still respect them as a woman, but only treat them like whores when it's time to treat them like whores, if you, if you catch my drill. When y'all get in that bedroom, like most women, most women want to be treated like a whore in the bedroom. Or rather, you know, some form of, they want that domination, they want that aggressiveness, they want you to, uh, you know, talk to them nasty, do nasty shit. You know, that's what most women want. Most women don't want to be treated all delicate in the bedroom and <laughs> they don't want all that shit. But anyway, as I um, started in my matriculation of the swingers lifestyle, I just started to learn more and more. Then, you know, by then I was going to Venus. I was going to trapeze. Um, I even got so deep into it, whereas I was like going to every party that you could find. I might have been there. You know, I started meeting other people in the swingers lifestyle. And I'm going to tell you, you know, that lifestyle of being a swinger, you know, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You know what I'm saying? If your sexual appetite ain't up to par, that probably ain't where you want to be. You don't want to be going to swinger parties and you don't really, you know, like sex because why are you even here? Like, I can actually, um, I can applaud the women who are just swingers and they're proud of it. Like, I'm going to tell you something. The best thing to do if you're a guy and you're trying to go and really get into the swingers lifestyle, just start hanging out at trapeze. If you're in Atlanta, just start going to hang out at trapeze. Even if maybe you going and you ain't been successful yet, just start going and hang out. I know for me, um, it was times where, like I had a game plan most of the time. If I didn't have a girl going with me, I would just go by myself. And I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would sit outside in the parking lot. And, you know, back during that time, I used to smoke a lot of weed. So I would sit out there in the parking lot smoke my weed, maybe be drinking me a drink, and I wait to see a woman about to walk in, and I wrote a one of them, hey, excuse me. And she was like, hey, yeah, how you doing? Listen up, you going in there by yourself? Yeah, I am. Listen, um, you mind if I walk in with you? I just don't want to pay that full price. That's the hustle, number one. You want to go in with a woman. You don't want to be going in without a woman because you finna pay $150, and you ain't trying to pay that. Especially if you're going to pay 150 and then you still don't go in there and get lucky, you're going to be pissed off. You could have, You could have went on OnlyFans and ordered you a bitch for $150. Because so the OnlyFans is like the new back page, just like back page 4.0, you know what I'm saying? But I met a lot of women doing that. Like I would meet them like that. We'd walk in, next thing you know, that's who I'm getting down with, you know? Um, but swinging, especially in Atlanta, it's not the same as it used to be. It's not the same. When I was going to swinger parties and swinger clubs and stuff like that, it to me, it was more people that came there with the mind frame of they're trying to have sex. 
to me, these new people that go to swinger parties and stuff like that, these people just trying to be seen. Um, they trying to be able to just tell their friends, like, I was at trapeze last night. Well, what you do? Oh, I ain't do shit, but I was in there. And it's like, like me and my wife, we've been to trapeze before. Now, I can honestly say, when we went to trapeze, we definitely did something. It wasn't no, we was just in there walking around. And number one, while we was in there, hell, I had, I had to keep looking over my shoulder. Like, the niggas was trying to holler at my wife. The women were trying to holler at my wife. You know, I know at one point, we went off in a little room, and we were just trying to sit by ourselves. And um, dudes just was in there just standing around. And at one point, I had to say, hey, fellas, we ain't finna put on no show in here. Like, we just in here talking and trying to have our drinks. And they was like, oh, okay, okay. And you got to watch shit like that, man, because, you know, you take a woman in a room and it's still open. Like, you know, you got the private room and then you got them open rooms where anybody can just kind of, you know, freely just flow in and out. You got to watch it because you might be in there and you be smashing. Next thing you know, it's a line of dudes that think they're going to be next to hit your chick. And you have to tell them, like, hey, man, no, ain't no, ain't no train going on in here because a lot of guys think that, once a girl start, you know, getting smashed in front of everybody that she's definitely open for the train. And some of them are, you know what I mean? You can't judge them. Some of them, you know, that's what they like. That's why they got movies out here, uh, you know, porno movies where women getting train ran on them. And, you know, that's what just some women are into. And I don't knock them. If they want to do that, do it, you know, but be proud of the train that got ran on you. That's all I say. Um, but, yeah, you know, start, when, when you first starting off, trying to be a swinger, especially in Atlanta, do your research, you know, Google that shit, YouTube that shit, maybe you'll see this video, go in there and be calm, be relaxed, but you can't use that same game that you use in South Dakota Mall on Calder Road, you ain't gonna be able to use that same game in the swing party, unless she's as unseasoned as you are. If she's as, un like I've seen women that have showed up at a swinger party, not a swinger, but by the time they left, full swinger. This one time, I was at a party, and I told my wife about this. I never forget it. I ain't gonna lie. It was it was kind of a turn on for me mentally as to how it happened. Like all night long, this girl had been walking around, and she was fine as hell. Oh, she was bad. She had been walking around, and uh, all she was doing, she was just watching. So you know, I'm a, you know, I like to communicate. So I walked up to her, and I was like, Hey, man, I said, you know, I've been watching you, man. You've been walking around. You walk, you in every room. If I'm over here fucking, you over there in the corner watching. And she was like, yeah, I'm just looking. I said, it's the first time you ever been to a swingers party? She was like, yeah, first time. I said, so, I mean, what are you into? Like, we, you know, we started having a conversation, but I, I didn't do nothing with her. But literally, all night she was doing this. So, late that night had came, later that night had come, and um, I was getting ready to leave. But I always been that one that right before I leave, I'm going to go check one more time. Let me go see who else left downstairs. Went downstairs, and lo and behold, who was down there getting banged from the back and giving head? That same chick. And I walked over there, and I looked, and I said, damn, shawty. And she was like this. Look now. She had a thing in her hand like this, and she looked to the side, and she said, she gave me that look like. And I said, good job. And I went on here and got up out of there. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, damn, like she went all night. And I don't know what it was that finally just titillated her to go ahead and just jump on off the porch. But, but she jumped off the porch in the driveway, rolled down the hill in the middle of the street. You know what I'm saying? With cars coming. But anyway, y'all, I appreciate y'all coming and checking out this another episode of the Chris Law Network. I am Chris Law. Please like, share, and subscribe. Liking the video is free. Sharing the video is free. And definitely subscribing to the channel is free. I will be dropping more and more and more content. As I think about it, you will get it. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I just appreciate y'all watching. And if y'all enjoying it, it ain't nothing to leave a comment down there. And uh, if you need to email me about any topics, any questions you got about anything, email me, chrislaw zero two one seven seven nine at gmail dot com. If anybody would like to, you know, donate to the foundation or to the network, the cash app is money sign Chris Law one seven two two. That's the cash app. I want to appreciate the cash apps that I have gotten, you know, because it's like wow when I see the cash apps come across and the messages, I be like, wow, this is somebody from YouTube. You know what I mean? So I really appreciate the donations that I have got. 
and the ones that I hopefully will get in the future. Once again, if you would like to donate to me and my family, because everything that I get, they get. The uh, cash app is Chris, uh, excuse me, money sign, Chris Law 1722. I will put it down in the comments, and I think it's in the description. I'm not sure. But y'all have a blessed and productive Sunday. Uh, I'll be on the grill later on, man. I got some, got some whole wings that I seasoned up last night. They marinating. Don't know what I'm going to cook with it, but I will be getting on that grill later on. Might even have me a little drink or four. Not, not a drink or two, but a drink or four. You know what I mean? But y'all be good, man. I'm out.